Hello, folks. Today is Friday, August 18th, 2023. As usual, my name is Jake Baldino, here to talk about all the video game news that's been going on this week. And there's quite a bit to talk about, so let's just jump in. The first thing involves another PC handheld. Yes, we have the Steam Deck. We have the Asus ROG Ally. Yes, that's how you say it. You actually say it, Asus. I know people make fun of me, but I literally asked the company. They, that's how they say it. But the newest thing on the block seemingly is from Lenovo, of all places. The hardware PC laptop manufacturer seems to also be jumping into this field uh, thanks to a leak. And this is called the Lenovo Legion Go. These are leaked images, so we don't know too much about it internally other than that it's using AMD tech and it's gonna run Windows 11. But from the images, <laughs> There's a lot here, holy shit. I mean, it seems like they're going for more of a Nintendo Switch style thing with a kickstand and removable controllers. And if you ask me, that's pretty cool, man. That's pretty ambitious, especially knowing it's gonna run Windows, that could end up being an awkward nightmare. But still, I think the best win from this whole thing is the creativity, the different consumer options here. It's actually pretty cool that the success of the Steam Deck seemingly helped spearhead a sort of market. It's almost like what they were hoping to do with Steam machines back in the day with third-party manufacturers, but this time seemingly much better. We don't know when the Legion Go is dropping with its cool, silly gamer name, but at the very least, we're gonna have more cool tech to talk about. And as for me, like a, a fake tech YouTuber, I'm very excited. What I wanna know from you guys in the comments, I was like, obviously, what do you think? But really, how much do you think this sucker is gonna cost? Because with the removable, presumably proprietary controller style, and then the hardware within it, then the screen and everything. How much is this gonna cost? How much is this gonna stack up next to the Ally and the Steam Deck? Oh, but uh, sticking with leaks, the PlayStation 5 redesign, a sort of PlayStation Slim, a, a little bit. It's not necessarily a completely shrunken down design, but leaks that dropped at the end of last week, like right before we put out the Friday show, have shown seemingly that the rumors are true. Uh, Sony has slightly tweaked the PlayStation design design in a slight design refresh, making it a little bit smaller and possibly that removable hard drive we talked about. Essentially, this more than anything just makes it easier for them to manufacture and distribute. Maybe we'll see cost savings. I don't know if that's going to get passed on to us, but the design, as you'll notice, is a little bit smaller, but also it's got these kind of quarters. It's kind of in quarters now instead of two panels. There's this cool little stylized stripe across it. This helps divide it up and presumably remove the hard drive piece. There's been rumors about this for months, weeks, we've talked about them. So as of right now, I, there was a lot of stuff swirling around that this would drop by the fall, but we don't know for sure. Ultimately, this isn't the most exciting thing in the world, but I will say if it shaves even just like an inch or so off the PlayStation 5, that's a win because that sucker is really big. Like, am I the only person that had a hard time, like, putting it in the TV, the thing under the TV? I don't know. I digress. Let's move on. In terms of gaming news, just a little heads up thing to put on your calendar. Gamescom is popping off next week, the big European game convention in Cologne, Germany. Uh, and with that, there's the opening ceremony, the big live stream event hosted by, of course, Jeff Keighley with game announcements and stuff like that. He has come out and say that it's not a lot of new game reveals. This is going to be more focused on updates for games that are already announced. And we do know currently that we're going to get a look at new Mortal Kombat 1 stuff, as well as a deep dive like gameplay look at Black Myth Wukong. And that's pretty exciting because we haven't seen anything for that in a while. So that could be pretty exciting. And there's a bunch of stuff we don't know about. So mark your calendar for that if you're looking Looking for a stream to watch and then complain after next week you're gonna have one. Oh man and in news that upsets me as the number one Robocop fan on the internet I'd like to say I'm competing with Skillet but hey Robocop Rogue City has been delayed from September to November 9th. There was a closed beta maybe they're working on feedback maybe they're just looking at the crammed release schedule Regardless, it's gonna take a little bit more time for Alex Murphy to come out of the closet. Come out of the closet. I don't know why I said that. Have Officer Alex Murphy come out of the woodwork. I don't know. Make his video game debut. It's not his debut, but modern game debut. Anyway, let's move on. And sticking with delays, because there's always a, this, the Friday show is the delay show at this point. Remember last year how many delays I talked about? Uh, another slight move is Alan Wake 2. But don't get it twisted, it's only bumped up a little bit. It was dropping October 17th, now it's going to be dropping October 27th. And this is specifically because of how crammed the release schedule is. So, smart move in my opinion, and also closer to Halloween. Perfect spooky time game. 
I'm about it. Next up, if you're looking for something a little spicy, some more inside baseball news, uh, some more details have come out about Embracer Group's big fallout where like a massive investor dropped out and they had to kind of scale back on all their big crazy investments, like how they bought the Lord of the Rings entire franchise and so many game development studios and they were gonna bring back all these IPs. Well, apparently the investor that dropped out, it was a mystery, but it is the Saudi Arabia backed investment firm Savvy Games Group. Savvy Games uh, is essentially the big Saudi Arabian investment vehicle into video games and entertainment that has been making big moves for a while, but we don't know why necessarily this, this deal fell through. But at the very least, what bothers me is how crazy Embracer Group went buying stuff up, getting excited, know they were knowing they were getting all this investor money. Uh, and now seemingly they're gonna have to walk back on some of that because I just look at it as like a consumer, like they're playing fast and loose with some game studios and intellectual property, like old game franchises that I really like. So like, what the f slow down, relax. That report is by Axios. I will link all of that stuff down in the description if you wanna read about it. Again, it's more industry type stuff, but it is pretty interesting. And I do expect more info to come out about this soon. I mean. Think about how big this deal was, like a billion dollars. It's insane. So eventually there's gonna be a movie. It's gonna be like Moneyball or like the big short, but about video games, maybe. I don't know, I would watch it. Hey, just a quick change of scenery here to talk about our sponsor for today, Incogni. So I've been in the process of moving and I needed to buy some new furniture. And when I did at the furniture store, I, I signed up for their like company loyalty card type of thing. And before I knew it, a few weeks later, my mailbox was filled with junk mail from random places. There's a digital version of that. I, I signed up for a company newsletter and then all of a sudden it feels like I'm getting so much more spam in my inbox. Well, it's because thousands of companies are collecting, storing, and trading your personal data. And these are symptoms of that. Without you even knowing, they'll have your name, your address, your phone number, and a bunch of other stuff. Stuff. And now you do have the right to request these data brokers to delete your data, but sometimes taking it all on yourself can take a long time. Incogni helps you protect your privacy and take your personal data off the market by reaching out to data brokers on your behalf, requesting your personal data removal and dealing with their objections. You simply create an account, you say whose personal data you're requesting to remove, and boom, then you just sit back and watch it happen. Like I said, it's easy and pretty awesome. I had heard about it from other sponsored YouTube videos, but until I really checked it out for myself, I was like, wow. Head to incogni.com slash gameranks and use code gameranks to get an exclusive offer of 60% off. That's incogni.com slash gameranks and use code gameranks or click the link in the description down below to take your personal data off the market. And big thanks to Incogni for sponsoring this video. Now, next up, some releases this week worth pointing out. Uh, Red Dead Redemption is now out on Nintendo Switch. It's also on PlayStation 4, backwards compatible to PS5, so it's catching it up, so now it's on Xbox modern platforms and PlayStation modern platforms. They're asking 50 bucks for it, and it's just a straight port uh, with no new features, so that kind of sucks, in my opinion. We, we put out a video about it, just a quick little look at it. The ports seem good. They didn't really seem to screw it up. It's not like a GTA trilogy situation seemingly the switch port at the very least like now nintendo people finally get to check out this game that's kind of cool but again that price is steep uh, but speaking of nintendo switch vampire survivors has now dropped on nintendo switch I, I talked about vampire survivors a lot last year i was really addicted to it very cool little game perfect for handheld i played it mostly on steam deck and switch is the perfect platform for it so just another random recommendation from yours truly. Oh, and the Texas Chainsaw Massacre multiplayer game is also out. Haven't really gotten our hands on that yet. Only a couple of review outlets got early access to the game, so I don't know how this is gonna go, but I like horror, so at some point I'm gonna give it a shot between all the other game releases. Oh, and one thing I wanted to share that kind of slipped by at the end of last week, uh, right after we put up the show, uh, they put a little Last Ronin teaser trailer out. Like this is the Ninja Turtle game based on the graphic novel. Uh, it doesn't really show too much, but it is now more like of an official thing about it. We previously just got like an image and an announcement. Now we have a cryptic teaser trailer. So there's that at least. And another new Starfield has gone gold, specifically meaning that uh, it is going to be available to preload. You can preload as of now, uh, even though the game is out on September 6th. And we're only talking about this specifically because uh, the size is really big. 
big. I know we reported on rumors last week, but yeah, the official numbers are in 140 gigs on PC and like 127 gigs on console. Hope we got the hard drive space for that. You better uh, delete uh, Call of Duty Warzone or whatever the hell is taking up a ton of space on your console. Anyway, small tiny update on Marvel Spider-Man 2. Some accessibility details have dropped, uh, kind of like accessibility features you'd expect from a first party Sony game. They've been implementing good stuff for a while, uh, essentially tool sets and different tweaks and options to enable in the game uh, so that more people can play it. Whether it's down to disabilities, preference, a younger player, more options in this instance is good. Uh, specifically one that we also saw in Ratchet and Clank most recently uh, is the ability to slow down time during combat. I mention that only because it, it's very cool to see how uh, accessibility and, and stuff is innovated in games. You know, only just a few years back, there wasn't really much other than just play the game on easy. But now a lot of games come with colorblind modes, just really cool, almost like futuristic options to enable more people to play games who may struggle with certain aspects, either visually, motor function. It's just interesting. So that is linked below. But also uh, some people were like, oh my God, Diablo 5 is coming sooner. That's a little crazy, honestly, but uh, we do have something from the, like one of the heads of Activision Blizzard talking about what's next. Obviously, they're still working on Diablo 4 and pissing people off with patches and stuff like that, but IGN's own and friend of the show, Ryan McCaffrey, tweeted about finishing Diablo 4 and how much he liked the campaign. And Blizzard's president, Mike Ibarra, replied saying, uh, going forward, you won't have to wait so long between titles. We have a lot more coming to Diablo 4 and beyond. So obviously that doesn't say too much. It's just like a guy tweeting, popping off as people do constantly. It's exhausting. But uh, all we can really get from this is that maybe going forward, the next Diablo isn't going to be a complete overhaul new thing. Are we going to see a Diablo 5 that looks kind of like Diablo 4? Is it not going to be something where they go in the trenches for 10 years and resurface with something completely different? I don't know, but at the very least, it's nice to hear that they are still working on and planning new content for Diablo 4, so you can expect that. I think that was pretty obvious, but still, little tiny update for you. Also, we got a tease last week, but now we have the big official new trailer for Modern Warfare 3. It's pretty cinematic and crazy. We got a new version of like the no Russian scene and a bunch of crazy chaos. Also a couple of details about the multiplayer and the map offering, which seems to be a lot. So there's that. And an Assassin's Creed Mirage update, that release date has actually been bumped. It was originally going to be October 12th, and now it's October 5th, which is pretty cool. The bummer is that the game has microtransactions. Yep, it has been detailed. Uh, it has been described as nothing that like helps you in the game. It's not XP boosters or anything egregious, but they're going to be selling Helix credits like in the previous games to buy cosmetics, buy outfits for your character, whatever. And I don't like it just it felt like we were so close with this one. I still don't know if this game is going to be good or not, but at the very least, they've talked up how it's more of a return to classic old school style Assassin's Creed. It's smaller. It's a shorter game. Game. It's more focused on the assassinations. That's what I want to hear as a fan. And they could have almost gotten like a perfect W on the board just for that. But then they put microtransactions in it still. Like it really doesn't need them, but they just couldn't help themselves, I guess. So there's that. Video games are going to video game. Still, I'm curious to see how that one goes. Like I said, it's up in the air, but we're going to be doing a before you buy video for that. We have a lot we're working on currently behind the scenes, a lot of secret games. So keep your eyes peeled. We are busy. Uh, the video game season is really ramping up from Baldur's Gate 3 to this and that and Starfield. It's, it's getting crazy. So thankfully, we're always here to get you caught up every Friday on the gaming news and stuff like that. Definitely let me know in the comments what you think about everything this week. The PlayStation 5 redesign leak of the Lenovo Steam Deck competitor. Are you playing Red Dead Redemption on Switch? You playing something else like Texas Chainsaw Massacre? I would love to hear your first reactions to that one if you're jumping in. But let's talk anything gaming news at all down here in the comments. We'll be down there as much as possible. But like I always say, things get a little crazy. So you can yell at me directly on Twitter and Instagram at Jake Baldino, my YouTube channel, Jake Baldino. But thank you guys very much for being here. You know we're here every Friday for you. We never stop. So clicking the like button helps us. Thank you. But that's it. All I ask is that you have a great weekend. Be safe. Pizza's on me.